The story begins with the tournament, the National Kendo Championship. This guy was so good at using blades and his opponent lost against him. And he was Yishiho, the protagonist of our story for today. He finished all rounds within 20 seconds, and the judge said that he had seen many players, but it was the first time he had seen someone like him. And clearly, Yishiho had surpassed exceptional limits. And asked if such a player would ever appear again, because it would be hard to find one like him in Korea, let alone the world. Three years later, in this club Shiho killed those men laid on the floor and there were three still alive and wanted to fight with him. The man asked his companion if they should kill Shiho and Shiho was holding a blade full of blood. They counted one to three and they attacked Shiho but they failed because Shiho struck them one by one. This man was still alive and was asking him who he was exactly but Shiho just ignored the man. Then suddenly a man arrived and was clapping its hand for him and said that it was a deadly strike chopping people up. Then suddenly Shiho pointed his blade to the man and said that one of them must die. But the man wasn't frightened and asked they shouldn't join hands now. Shiho confronted the man that it was the one who killed his sister and led to their mother's death. Two years ago in Gangneung, his mother was sleeping and he heard in the news that with the ongoing economic downturn, self-employed individuals were taking direct hits. And in one area of Seoul, even Taekwondo and Kendo dojos, as well as chicken restaurants, were shutting down. And hope all self-employed individuals will stay strong. He turned off the television and walked upstairs to his room. He was cleaning and got all the things in the box and then suddenly someone was calling and asked him if he was going to quit kendo and he answered that he was. And the guy said to just call him director and told him that his skills were too good to waste. And if he wanted to make a living from kendo, opening a dojo was the only way. He said to the director that he needs to get a job and the director told him to just join his dojo as an instructor and he will treat him well. And he was being asked if he already find a job and he answered with just his mother to care for, he was planning to take on a store to help her out. And the director asked if it was a gukbap restaurant, and that means starting broth from dawn, and working over 12 hours a day and asked him if it was right. And he suddenly told his director that he needs to pack and he will call him later. He saw his pictures when he was still a kid winning kendo. His sister loves taking photos everywhere, when his sister was in college they took a photo but still he was not smiling and his sister got annoyed and asked when she saw him smiling. His mother asked his sister if he was really going to live alone in Seoul and his sister answered that Seoul was safe and there was no worrying too much for. And it was not just one or two people who got accepted to universities in Seoul from the provinces and found a place to live. And Shiho said that it was and if something happened, he wanted his sister to draw an infinity sign and his sister was asking what infinity sign he was talking about. And he answered that it was an 8 lying on its side. His sister gets irritated and asks if he thinks something's going to happen to her and said that her family was really one of a kind seriously. His sister saw her friend and told her mother that her friend was also going to rent a place and live alone. And she asked her friend that they will take a photo together but still Shiho wasn't in a mood. He checked his phone and he accidentally touched his kendo trophy and it fell into the floor and it broke into pieces. He saw the news in his phone that the robberies targeting women living alone still continue, and the victims were saying that it will take someone dying for people to take notice. And so he called his sister but the connection was unavailable, and it went straight to voicemail. It was raining and he was worried, so he called it again using voicemail. In his sister's rental room, the phone was ringing and the music was on. There was a man washing his hands in the bathroom, and then they saw a notebook and asked his companion wasn't that weird that it was the same thing drawn over and over again in the notebook. And thinking that the woman must be crazy and so they forget about it and his companion told him to grab what's important and they will leave the place because their victim was still getting calls. And they were thinking that there was someone to come over since there was no contact. And Shiho's sister was tied up in the ceiling and was already dead. His sister was already at the funeral and his sister's friend came over to visit. And so he asked if he wanted to have a bowl and the woman said that she didn't need it and she was feeling awful right now. And the woman was asking about his mother and he answered that his mother was lying down there and doesn't have energy. The woman was going to leave and he followed it outside, but the woman pleaded with him not to follow and said that she would be alright. While she was walking he saw the funeral flower named by the TV representative, then she called Shiho and asked if they could go out and they will talk. They were outside drinking some coffee from the coffee machine. He asked the woman what she wanted to talk about, and the woman looked worried and in the sudden looked at him and asked if he was really not sad at all. And told him that his sister said that he was like an emotionless psychopath, and it turned out to be true. 
but he was speechless and silent and he asked the woman what she wanted to talk to him about. The woman was so angry and told him that his sister just died and asked how he could be so calm. And he answered that he can't take a long time off because he was in mourning. And told the woman that if she doesn't have anything to say, he will take his leave. The woman was so vexed and left her coffee on the bench, and Shiho was coming back to his sister's funeral and took a look at the flower that the woman looked at lately. Three days later, he looked at his sister's supplementary note, and the thing he was checking for has the amount of one million one. He was in his sister's room, checking all the things and keeping them in a box. Then he saw a notebook with the photo of his sister and its friend, then on the back of it he saw the infinity sign that his sister made just like he told her. And so he went to his sister's university, he was sitting on a bench and everyone was looking at him and asking who he was and it was the first time seeing him there. His sister's friend came over to him and asked him what he was doing there. Shiho asked him about the photo and she answered that it was when they were at the club, but Shiho resisted that it was not a club. The woman felt bad about it, and so they talked at the coffee shop and the woman said that she and his sister were working at a bar. And Shiho asked if it was a bar where they made cocktails. And the woman answered that it was like that bar, and the bar owner was someone who sits next to her and makes small talk and it was also the man who sent condolence flowers. Shiho asked if it was a flash, the woman answered that it was not a strange place, and the customers just sat next to them and talked. The customer can't touch them and strange customers are kicked if they do strange things. And it was just a part-time job he did to pay her tuition fee. Shiho asked her if that was all and if she was not hiding anything about his sister and asked if he was right. The woman had something to say, but there was a man outside the widow staring at her, then he suddenly said to Shiho that she was not hiding anything and told Shiho that it was all and she had a class and she had to go. Shiho was so vexed and he went back to his sister's rental room and he punched the cabinet that hard and his hand was bleeding. And Shiho knew now that the cause of his sister's death was not suicide. He went to the police station to report, he was talking with the detective on the front disc. The detective asked if he was saying that his sister might have been murdered and told him that he doesn't have any proof. He said to the detective that he and his sister agreed to alert each other with an infinity sign if they were in danger. The detective asked him how they would send it in a text, and he answered that they made that agreement back in high school, so just typing the number 8 would do. The detective was asking if his sister alerted him instead of the police force, and he answered to the detective that his sister couldn't bring herself to tell him about working at a bar, so it seems like his sister wrote it in a notebook instead. The detective asked him and he said that the funeral was held, and his sister must have been cremated and he was being asked if it was right, and told him that an autopsy would be required to know whether it was murder or suicide. But when the initial death report came in, he ruled it as suicide and opposed an autopsy. He said to the detective that his mother was against it, and the detective said that anyway, once someone was cremated, there was no way to go back. And they can't start an investigation without any leads. Shiho told the detective that he suspected his sister's job at the bar might be related and asked the detective if they could at least interview people connected to the bar. But the detector told him that it won't work and though he had a solid alibi, he was usually the most suspicious one in the situation and asked him how he was so emotionless. And suddenly told him to bring them something more concrete. Otherwise, they can't start an investigation, and asked him if he did understand and he answered that he did. And so Shiho left the police station in silence and remembered the name Samsung Dong Flash. So Shiho found the bar and he found it in the middle of his finding and he was asking why it was downstairs. When he stepped downstairs, there was a man in front of the door and was asking him if he came alone and if he was looking for someone specifically. And he told the man that it was first time there, then the man wanted to show him the way. And so they walked through and heard the guy was talking to someone on the phone. He analyzed the place, that it was in the basement level 1, about 20 steps down. 5 meters from the entrance to the counter. At the counter was the male owner. In the center of the store, there was a hall in the center and rooms with curtains along the walls. And he suddenly asked himself if there was only one entrance food outsiders. He was sitting on the couch and suddenly a woman got inside and said hello to him and asked him if he had been there before. And he answered to the woman that it was his first time and the woman told him that it was the rotation-based seating bar, and he can only chat, no touching allowed. He said to the woman he got but he asked if the woman knew someone named Sian. The woman was thinking and suddenly answered that Sian doesn't work there anymore, and she was not sure and Sian had quit a while ago, then the woman smiled at him. And Shiho notices that when the woman smiled, her eyes were stiff, and the corners of her mouth were forced. And guessing that they know something. 
The woman asked what he would like to drink or snack on, then Shiho ordered something and the woman told him that they will send the others in. The woman was heading to the owner and reported that their customer was looking for Sian, and the owner was asking himself if the Sian that Detective Lim mentioned to him was the same guy. The woman was asking if she should just tell the guy that they were fully booked and send him away. But the owner told her not to do it because it was necessary and wanted the woman to tell his companion not to talk about Sian, and to just make them say they don't know anything about Sian. The owner asked about Sian's friend, and the woman answered that since what happened to Sian, her friend was not coming to work anymore. And the owner was thinking that the guy was probably trying to dig something, so wanted the woman to act like they didn't know anything. He asked every woman who entered the room about Sian, but all the women answered that they didn't know the name Sian. And he was asking looks like not a single person knows about, then suddenly the woman asked him if need anything and he answered to the woman that he was leaving. And the woman asked if he would pay it with card or cash for the bill, then he gave his card. The woman whispered to the owner that it looked like the customer didn't find anything, and the owner said that he guessed not and asked the woman what time it was. The woman answered that it was 1.30 in the morning. And the owner was dialing someone on his phone and said that it would be better to put the customer in the spot where it can't wander off. Shiho was leaving and he was a little bit tipsy. He was walking on the street and he felt dizzy, and he felt that there were people following him while walking home. He kneeled on the side of the street and acted like he vomited, but he was listening to those people following him. He picked a piece of poster then suddenly a man came closer to him and tapped his shoulder and he asked the man who it was and the man told him to go that way. He went with the man that way, and it was slightly dark and silent. He was being beaten up with the guys, Shiho was analyzing that there were three of them, the alley was about 1.5 meter wide, and it was difficult for him to take on all three at once. The man asked him why he wasn't talking, and he was thinking if it was just a simple robbery or was there another motive. The man was going to beat him, but he said that he doesn't have money, and the man was asking a guy with no money to walk around in Samsung Dong, and the other man ordered to break his legs so he can't walk around there again. And Shiho was asking himself if it was related to the inquiries he made at the bar about his sister's whereabouts. The man told him that if he somehow managed to leave alive, it would cost him 10 won per hit. Then suddenly Shiho gets a roll of paper inside his hoodie, and he will use it to fight them. The man was laughing at him and asked if he was gonna fight them with that roll of paper and told him that it was not a knife. And the other man made fun of him and said that he was totally drunk and asked him how many fingers he saw. Then Shiho gave the man a warning to back off, the man told him to stop talking and get going with it. The owner of the bar was wondering if it has been settled already and said that he will go check the CCTV. He opened the door and checked the CCTV inside, and he was shocked when the men were not done yet. He was so vexed and said that he told them to break one of the legs and asked himself what was taking them so long. And watch on the CCTV and guess that the guy was holding a knife. Shiho beat the man on the front by just using a roll of paper and a punch. And this man was going to punch him, but he failed, and then Shiho turned at his back and attacked the other man behind him. The man was really shocked and asked what was inside of that piece and he answered that it was just a piece of paper. The man was so frightened and asked him if he started that tool to fight, didn't he? And told him that he started it, so even if he gets crippled today, it was his own fault. Shiho came closer to him and struck his hand and the knife he was holding was released. The man was so frightened and said that it was not right, and then suddenly Shiho stabbed him and he was being beaten up. The owner of the bar was staggered by what he saw, and Shiho stepped up that roll of paper and left the place, and all of a sudden the rain came. The owner of the bar was still looking at the CCTV and he suddenly asked what kind of guy Shiho was. He was calling someone on the phone and he was asking where Shiho lived and he wanted to find out right away. Shiho was already in his sister's rental room and removing the bandage on his hand. He was thinking about his sister's friend because he knew that the woman knew something and he knew that the woman looked at the window when she needed something to say. And then he was asking if there was someone following and keeping an eye on his sister's friend and those men he encountered can't be a coincidence either and he was guessing that he should have grabbed one and taken it to the police station. He was looking outside the window and he clearly knew that his sister's friend knew something and he was asking if it put him in danger if he went looking for the woman again. The owner of the bar was sleeping in his bed and suddenly someone was calling in his phone. And when he answered it, it was a call about Sian's older brother. The man said that while Shiho was organizing his younger sister's things, he was currently staying at the studio where Sian used to live. And also said that the mother of Shiho was at Gangneung Hospital in Gangneung, and Shiho was alone in Seoul. 
and the caller guesses that the mother collapsed after hearing about her daughter. The owner of the club said that he never mind about it and asked if Shiho was living where his sister used to live. And the caller answered that it was an originally, the plan was to organize and go down, but Shiho decided to stay put. And said additionally that Shiho was a bit unique, he was a kendo champion. And kendo in Korea seems to be a recreational sport without practical application, but still Shiho was a champion. The caller was asking what they should do and shall they bury Shiho. The owner of the club said that Detective Lim told them to lay low for now and stand by for now, then he hung up the call. He checked about Shiho and said that kendo isn't popular in their country, and there were only a few short articles about it, aren't there? And he was thinking that Shiho living alone could be problematic and he was asking how he would quietly resolve it. He was doing some exercise, then someone rang the doorbell, and when he opened it, it was the owner of the club. He asked the owner what brought him there, and the owner answered that the studio that Sian was renting, he got it for her through the store, and he thought that it was time to move out so he talked to the landlord. And it mentioned that someone was there, and Shiho told the bar owner that sorting Sian's belonging was not finished yet. And he told the bar owner in the condolence money lost, there was a one million one under the name Flash and asked the bar owner if he made it as a contribution. The bar owner answered that he had and he heard about his sister's suicide and said that he just felt so terrible. Shiho asked why, and the bar owner answered that Sian was really popular, and because of that scout offers used to come from there and there. And said additionally that he tried his best not to let Sian get snatched away, but Sian got scouted to a place called Ten Pro. The bar owner was already inside and drinking some coffee and Shiho was asking about Ten Pro he was saying. The man answered that he probably heard about it, and said that it was like the final boss of entertainment establishments. And said additionally that there was no second round, it was just a place to chat. But he heard Sian suffered a humiliating incident there and he wonder if that could be the reason Sian committed suicide. Shiho was looking at the man and the man said sorry that he failed to protect Sian. Shiho notices that the bar owner was constantly moving his hands and a tongue wetting dry lips and an unstable gaze. And he knew that the bar owner was telling a lie. And the bar owner was getting something on his coat and it was an envelope and he said that it was his sincerity for Sian. And then suddenly Shiho said that his sister was murdered, and the bar owner was asking what he was saying. And Shiho answered that the funeral was held without a body, and an autopsy was requested, and the bar owner was asking himself if an autopsy would reveal everything. And Shiho said additionally that they were supposed to get the body back tomorrow morning and the results will probably come out tomorrow. And he will go to the police station tomorrow with the autopsy results. And all of the sudden, the bar owner pleaded to let him know if they needed any help. Shiho said thank you to the man and the man left his place. He was at the parking lot and he was asking if Shiho must be bluffing, but he couldn't tell since Shiho's expressions had been the same. He was really worried about it and so he actively called his men and ordered them to bury Shiho tonight, and his men asked if they would kill Shiho right there. And he told the man to kill Shiho and clean up thoroughly afterwards and since Shiho was a kendo champ, they need a good number of guys. And the men answered that he know their skills and they will make it look like a clean suicide. A car was arriving in front of the rental building, and it was the bar owner's men and they were heading inside. At the rental room, Shiho was in the bathroom and got something. Shiho was analyzing that there were five payong of actual floor space. The luggage was organized but it's still cramped. And guessing that no more than two enemies could enter at a time too, and the back was a wall, so he only had to deal with the enemies by moving one step each to the front, left, and right. Somebody was coming on the door and he was asking if they knew the password of the room. He was waiting, and he was hiding behind the curtain so that he could be ready. The men were inside now, and the leader of them saw that Shiho was not there, and his companion said that they had been watching the whole time and he was sure that Shiho hadn't left. They were looking for Shiho and they were asking where did it go, and the man said to turn on the light, because the motion sensor light was going on and off and it was annoying. When the light was being turned, all of them were really shocked, because Shiho looked at them and asked who they were. The guy said that it was a bit troublesome and the leader said that can't help it then, so they will deal with him first and think afterwards. Shiho told them if they were a thief, there was nothing to take from there. And the leader said that there is, and they were taking his life. He told the man that he trained in martial arts and preparing the thing he will use to attack, and told them also that he doesn't want to hurt people so he will give them a chance to go back. The man was laughing at him and the leader told him to die for now and he will take care of the rest. Shiho said that it was not polite to play with the weak so he will end it in one go. 
The man was going to attack but he failed and Shiho batted his head and he was hurt. And so the leader said that they will attack at once and kill Shiho. The two of the men were being hit in their hand and their knife was released in their hand and the two of them were also hurt. The leader was the one left, and he was shaking and frightened. He tried to attack but he also failed and Shiho hit him and he was hurt. Shiho brought all the men to the police station and the detective said that he checked the men's criminal records and they were all clean. Shiho said to the detective that the men said that they will take his life, and the detective was asking if he can prove it with a recording or something similar. Shiho answered that he can't and then the detective told him that there's no way to guarantee his claim's credibility. And also said that the current situation was that those guys were guilty of trespassing, but him utilizing excess force to defend himself was a more serious crime. Shiho was really shocked and asked what the detective was talking about, and the detective answered him that he wielded a weapon and beat them up recklessly and one of them was sent to the hospital with a broken collarbone and according to the law, he was in deeper trouble and asked him if he understood. Then suddenly Shiho said that he didn't understand, he was genuinely defending himself against trespassers in his own home and he merely caught and reported them to the police. The detective was telling him that was not how law works in Korea and told him that he was a suspect right now. Shiho was asking why he was a suspect and the detective answered that since he was wielding a weapon, it was considered aggravated assault and it was a crime and he was being asked if he got it. He was being imprisoned and the detective told him that his registered address was in Gangnam but he had been staying in Seoul which constitutes him as a vagrant and wanted him to not misunderstand why he was being placed in the holding cell. Then suddenly a man inside called him and asked why he was there and said that he can take a rough guess seeing as that bastard was handling that personally, and asked if it was the bar owner director you, and said that man was in cahoots with the police under director you, and it was no coincidence and he was on duty today and they have already struck a deal to cover up for him. And the man wanted him to tell about it and he would get him out and Shiho asked the man if he knew director you. And the man answered that he did and they used to be family, and said additionally that he called a lawyer so he should be there soon and then told him that if his behavior satisfies him, he will get him out there and asked if it was a deal and why he was there. Detective called Director Yua and said that he put Shiho in the holding cell for now, but he can't keep him there for long. And he was telling him that there was a limit he could do. Shiho and the man were talking and the man was saying in his mind that Shiho doesn't tell a lie. And said to Shiho and he guessed like he picked the wrong opponent and there's no way an ordinary person can do that. And Director Yu's backing was strong. And Shiho was asking if there is a way if it isn't an ordinary person, and the man answered that perhaps he would break the law, or else there's no other way. Shiho was asking the man if he could tell him more about that side of things and the man said that still had yet to introduce himself to him. The man said that he was Du Kyungu, and he ran a small karaoke bar in Sinsadong. Shiho asked if he was a gangster and the man said that he said it easily and he was the part of an organization and he was there because of a false accusation and said that director use people occasionally interfere with his business and they usually report it as an illegal establishment, and sometimes even for drugs. So he gets caught, proves his innocence, gets released, and the cycle repeats itself and he is used to it now. Then he said that director Yu was also a thug and Shiho said that if he was saying that the both of them aren't on good terms and asked if he was right. The man said that director Yu was nothing, the real problem was the one behind him. And there was a guy known as Representative Yoon, he struck down and killed the boss they used to serve and seized all the power. When it occurred, he parted ways with them saying that he can't stay with traitors. Shiho was asking if the man he was saying killed someone but faced no legal punishment and the man laughed and said that Representative Yoon was a scary guy. And then suddenly said to hold on and he felt like they were friends, and asked if he could speak casually, and he was in his early thirties. Shiho told him that it was older than him and wanted the man to speak comfortably. They were talking about his sister and the man asked if everyone's keeping their mouth shut about his sister's death. Then Representative Yoon must be involved with this, and said additionally that it was not the first time Representative Yoon had gotten rid of someone unfavorable to him. Shiho asked if there was somewhere he could go to meet that person. The man laughed at him and said sorry, but he can't meet him, and only those at a certain level can and told him that he only had one option to do so and Shiho asked what it was. The man said that he needed to start a power struggle and push his way in, and he might have been prepared to go to prison and he might have to kill someone. And the man told him that to be honest, he advised against it. If he had his own life, just accept it as a suicide and move on. The detective called the man to come out, and the man guessed that his lawyer was there and told Shiho to wait a minute and he will get him out there too. 
And so Shiho got out of the cell together with the man, and Shiho said thank you to the man and the man said there was nothing to thank for, because he was forcibly detained in the first place. And said additionally that if his guess was right, as long as Representative Yoon was involved, they can't even proceed with his case. And then suddenly the man got his calling card and gave it to Shiho and said that for when he would like a drink, it was on him. Shiho said thank you and the man said that it looks like he only brought his business card holder, and he was starving as he hadn't eaten since lunch yesterday, and asked Shiho if he had any money. Shiho got his money from his wallet and gave it to the man, but the man just got 1001 and said that it was enough for him and said goodbye to him. Director Yu was in this office and Representative Yoon said when he looked from up high, people really resemble ants. And told him that in any moment, he can crush them to death and suddenly asked him what he was going to do about it. Director Yu told Representative Yoon that Detective Lim says he had reached his limit defending them and he asked them to lay low for a while, so there was no other way for now. And Representative Yoon asked isn't it that he shouldn't have failed in the first place and Director Yu said sorry for it. Representative Yoon said that the guy Sian called Appa in Korea, beating someone up like that wouldn't be considered self-defense and asking if he was right. Director Yu said that they should formally file a lawsuit. Representative Yoon asked what if he got exposed in the process and said to Director Yu that it was five years younger than him and Director Yu said that he was and Representative asked him if he had to spoon-feed him every little thing. And wanted him to talk to Detective Lim and get it handled like it never happened and Detective Lim would do it if he would give it two million won. And wanted Shiho House in Gangnuang to burn it and the neighborhood will guess that it was the kid playing with fire since the house was empty. And wanted him to take a photo of Shiho's mom with a sashimi knife to her throat and send it to Shiho. And so Director Yu left and drove through the hospital to Shiho's mother. Shiho's mother laid on the bed and the woman told him to eat, but he didn't want to. The woman told her that at that rate, she will starve to death and asked her if she knew how many days it has been since she didn't eat. And also asked when Shiho was coming, and there had been no word since he went to Seoul and asked why. And abruptly, someone was knocking at the door, and it was Director Yu and he said that he was acquainted with his daughter Yi Sian. And he heard that Sian's mother was hospitalized there. The mother had something to say but the woman said that she was too shocked to speak well right now. Director Yu said sorry and gave a box of oranges to the woman and said that he needed to discuss something with Sian's mother briefly, and asked the woman if she could give them a moment. The woman told him that Sian's mother can't speak and Director Yu said that he just needed to relay a message. So the woman left the room and Director Yu told the mother that he will get straight to the point, and said that her daughter owes him some money, then showed the contract. And he said that Sian took 200 million in advance from him, but since Sian's died he can't collect it. And the mother was really shocked, and Director Yu told her that the contract was with a room salon and her daughter sold her body to make money and Sian went all out on him and asked the mother if she knew why he was there. The mother was really shocked and it made her cry and Director Yu asked why she was crying and the mother suddenly talked and said that her daughter isn't that kind of girl and she got angry. Director Yu pulled the hair of the mother and was being told that her daughter was that kind of girl, a cheap girl who will sleep with anyone for a little money, and guess it takes after her. The mother was so angry and crying and kept saying that her daughter was never gonna be like that, but Director Yu pulled the hair so much, in order for her to lose strength and die. Shiho was thinking and asking if he should give up and what about Sian. Then suddenly his phone rang up and it was a call from the hospital and he was being asked if he was Soon Yoon Lee's guardian. And he was being told that his mother was already dead. And back to Director Yu, he was talking to Representative Yoon, and he said that he had been in Shiho's mother, but he suddenly died. And he was being asked if he killed the mother and he answered that he didn't and he only threatened it, and it was trembling alone and died. Representative Yoon told him to claim the debt from the older brother. And Director Yu said that he will take care of it and he will handle the house too. Director Yu took a deep breath and asked what he should do about it and the driver asked if it wasn't Director Choi in that neighborhood and why didn't he try contacting him. Shiho's mother was already at the funeral and then abruptly someone arrived and it was the woman in the hospital. He asked the woman how did it know the deceased and the woman answered that she was the caregiver and so he pleaded to the caregiver to eat. And while they were eating he said thank you to the caregiver for coming and also said that he requested him through an agency, and it was the first time he saw her face. And the woman said that she was the caregiver of his mother. And then suddenly mentioned that someone came that day, and asked for her to leave for them to talk between themselves. The person who talked with his mother inside the hospital room looked neat, but the person standing outside looked like some gangster. And then she started hearing noises from the hospital room, she left for about 10 minutes and when she returned, 
his mother had already died, and said additionally that his mother hadn't eaten properly for about a week, so she had no energy and the person who visited had already left. Shiho was so vexed and he suddenly heard outside that people were in chaos. And then a group of people was heading towards him. The man asked him how did he get there and the other man was laughing and he was being asked if he was the chief mourner and the dead woman was his mother. But Shiho didn't answer and was just staring the man. The man tapped his face and he was being asked if he talked about someone's mother carelessly, won't people usually get furious and he was asking why he was not changing his expression at all. And the other man thought that Shiho was scared and the other man asked him again if he had a younger sister named Sian and if he was right. And the man told him that his sister entered a room salon in Seoul and took off with the money, and he bought that debt. A 200 million plus 100 million interest, totaling 300 million. And they were taking all the condolence money and he was being asked if he got it. Shiho answered that it can't be true, and the man was slapping him over and over again and told him that his sister probably didn't tell his family because she was embarrassed and he was being asked how he will pay back the debt. And he answered that there was a house and the man said that he knew about it and he looked into everything, but the house burned down, and it disappeared in a fire just now. But Shiho just stared at the man and the man was asking what was wrong with him and why isn't his expression not changing at all. And the man behind him answered that they say people freeze up when they are too shocked. And abruptly Shiho said that there was quite a bit of cash in the safe and he will bring it and come find them and wanted to give him the location. And the man was smiling and asked if it was about 300 million and when he brought it. And Shiho answered that he will bring it after the funeral, but the man held him near and asked if can't he could assess the situation and should he open the coffin. And Shiho answered that he will bring it before 12 midnight on that day. And so the man gave his calling card and left the funeral. It was 11.50 in the evening and it was raining, and Shiho was on his way to the man's place and he was bringing something in his bag and it was his kendo blade. It was 11.59 and the man was waiting and asking if the funeral home was closed. And his guard said that it was and it was dark and as the restaurant was closed, and was asking if he really thought the guy would come. And the man said that if Shiho doesn't, it will give them a good excuse or else it will be dead. Shiho was already inside the building and he suddenly got a call from his teacher. And so he answered it and his teacher said sorry and it was judging a kendo tournament in Japan in the current. And his teacher suddenly asked if the funeral hadn't started yet, and said that he was looking for a flight and there seems to be one tomorrow morning and he will be there tomorrow and said sorry again. And Shiho said that it was fine, and he had something to do, so he needed to hang up the phone. He ended the call and he was saying in his mind that he might not see his teacher tomorrow and said thank you for everything. It was already 12.03 and the boss was asking if Shiho wasn't gonna show up and it was past midnight. His men asked if the guy ran away and the boss said that he didn't expect the guy would run away because he told him earlier that the funeral home was dark. And so he called director Yu and said that the guy didn't show up and ran away. While they were talking there was suddenly knocking on the door and so he hung up the call. And when the men opened it, it was Shiho and the men let Shiho enter. The boss said that he thought he wouldn't show up and asked where the money was. Shiho answered that he didn't have it and the boss was really shocked and asked why he didn't have it. Shiho asked the boss who was his backing and the boss suddenly stood up and said that the guy was asking for him and wanted his men to rough Shiho up. Those men were around him and the boss told him that they were not joking and they were not trying to scare him. And told him that he was really done for, and the door was locked and he couldn't leave and he was like a rat in a trap. And Shiho used his shirnai to attack and beat those men one by one and all those men that were attacking him and they were hurt and beaten up. And the rest of the man was really shocked and was staring at Shiho, and so the boss told them to attack Shiho and kill it, but Shiho wasn't frightened and was just staring to the man and said that he will kill them all first and he beat all of the men left and he was very exasperated, and the boss was really scared and pleaded to spare his life. But Shiho was still asking who's behind them, and suddenly the boss answered that it was counterfeit, they said that they would sell 2 billion one worth of bonds for 5,000. And he thought they were real when he bought them and said that he doesn't know anything he swears. Shiho was asking who was this counterfeiter, and the boss answered that it was in Seoul and was rolling a few bars in Seoul, and said that it was all he knew. Shiho was asking himself how the backing was involved, and told the boss that now he had the answer, he will be going. Shiho was going to leave and the boss was really shocked and asked if it was a joke. And then suddenly he got the dagger on his back and tried to attack Shiho, but he failed because Shiho beat him in his head over and over again, in order for him to die. At the funeral home, 
Shiho's teacher was there and Shiho left a message and he said sorry and understood that he couldn't contact him due to his heart condition. And said that he transferred all the money in his account to the teacher's account. And it was a small amount, and pleaded to use it for the funeral and he will visit him someday. Shiho was walking on the street and finding the place of the man that helped him get out of the cell. Then he finally found it and when he opened the door, the man was shocked and Shiho said that he came because he said that he would buy him a drink. And the man said that it was nice meeting him again, and told him to sit over there and he will introduce him to the prettiest one. And so he sat in there and the man came back and brought some drink, and suddenly asked him why he came so quickly, and the employees started at 8. Shiho told the man to forget about the girls and he had a favor to ask. And the man asked what it was and he answered that he wanted to work there. The man was really shocked and said that they don't have room for another employee though. And Shiho said that he just needs a place to sleep and food to eat and he doesn't need a salary. And the man said to hold on and suddenly asked why he was like that and why he was in a rush. But Shiho didn't answer and was silent, and the man guessed that something was up, but it was hard for him to help out. And suddenly Shiho said that at that time, he suggested one way, and the man was thinking that could it be the thing he said to him in the cell. And he was smiling and said that he couldn't believe him, because he said that it was impossible and he told him to just move on and live his life, but here they were. Shiho told the man that since he also views Director Yoon as a traitor, he will be backing him up. Even though their motives differ, their end goal was the same. The man laughed at him and told him that he was very hilarious and wanted him to grab a drink and said that he was talking nonsense. Shiho got angry and the man asked him if he had lost his mind, and he couldn't even answer a thing. And so the man left him inside and said that it was not a place for civilians to be wandering around, and if anyone hears what he just said, he was a dead man, and so he will pretend that he didn't hear it. And so Shiho drank a full bottle of whiskey and he passed out. The woman was calling him up and asked if he was okay and snapped out of it and the man was asking what's wrong with him. And when Shiho opened his eyes, he called the woman in the name Sian and the woman was really shocked and asked how did he know her name. Shiho was sleeping on the couch and then he suddenly woke up. The man was at his side watching him and Shiho said sorry to the man. The man said that he didn't realize he was so easily broken and he seemed composed. And suddenly stood up and said that he had to go and then Shiho said that his mother passed away and they killed her. And they disrespect the deceased and made a scene at the funeral home and that's what broke him. He took his cap and said sorry for the trouble, he was going to open the door but the man said to wait a minute and asked him if he had a place to go and Shiho answered that he didn't. The man said that he didn't know why he was soft hearted, and suddenly told him that he can work there. And if he had nowhere else to go, he can sleep there and told him that it was the hideout they used during the crackdowns. And Shiho was staring at the billiard stick and the man told him not to stare at it because it was expensive. And told him that pushing into representative Yoon territory and saying something stupid, may get him killed. And told him also that he was just a store manager and focused on managing the store, and he was being asked if he got it. And Shiho answered that he did, and the man told him to just listen to him and don't take orders from anyone else. He was starting his work as a manager and the woman named Sian asked him if he was starting working on that day and he answered that he was. And he said to the woman that yesterday, after drinking he thought he made a mistake and apologized to the woman. The woman said that it was okay, and he must have just mistaken him for someone else. And the woman suddenly asked if the name Sian was her ex-girlfriend. But Shiho said sorry again and he will be careful with his words next time. The woman suddenly expresses something and Shiho asks what is up. And the woman asked him if he realized how old-fashioned his way of speaking was, and it was giving her goosebumps and suddenly asked him were he really from the 21st century. But he didn't answer Sian and it came closer to him and told him that he was really old-fashioned, and advised him that he shouldn't appear weak there, the weak became prey and asked if got it. Shiho answered that he appreciated the advice. And so the man told everyone that since they have a new assistant manager, he wanted everyone to introduce themselves. Started with Waiter Hoon 21 years old, Waiter Cheol 21 years old, Manager Ryan 29 years old, Employee Sian, Yesung 23 years old, Aaron 30 years old, Yoonji 22 years old, Part-time Worker Dohee 27 years old, Part-time Worker Yian Wook 23 years old. The man told Shiho to use any name other than his real name. And so he was being introduced as Manager Kim, and told him to get along well with everyone. The woman said that their new manager was cute, but also old-fashioned and delicate like a flower. One month later, the waiter was talking to their boss, 
and Shiho asked what was happening and the waiter answered that they needed to close the bar on that day. And Sian asked the waiter if it was really today, and said that they get fake reports once a month, and it was the day their boss goes to jail. Shiho asked can't they just keep operating and Sian answered that it will be chaos if they operate without the boss. And said that weird people come from the counterfeit side. They come and demand protection money by threatening them. And the other manager told him that since it was his first time as a manager, he might not know well. And so all of the customers needed to get out in the bar, and the employees were assisting them outside. And so the bar closed, but the sign light suddenly turned on, and Shiho was still inside. At the modern bar flash, Director Yu was talking to someone on the phone and the one he was talking to said that the employees left the door open and the sign's light wasn't turned off. Director Yu said that Du Kyung Go was still in the detention center and asked himself what was happening right now. He went to the CCTV monitor to check and got the phone in the drawer and called President Yoon. He reported that the light on the again sign was on, and Du Kyung Go was already put in the detention center a while ago. President Yoon told him that if he left the business in his hands, he should be able to figure that stuff out. And he was asking if there is still no news on the guy who escaped from Gangneung, and Director Yu answered that they haven't heard anything about where he was hiding. President Yoon was a little bit angry and said that he was going to kill the guy the moment he saw its face. And suddenly asked what about the bar again, and Director Yu said that the bar was running their business without their boss. President Yoon was thinking that the only one worth anything under Kim Jian Woo was Du Kyung Go. But someone messed with it, and they were still open for business. Director Yu suddenly asked what they should do, and President Yoon got vexed and told him to hold on because he was thinking. And so President Yoon told him to send Tae Chang over. Kim Tae Chang was using a tank when a rifle would do and asked what could President Yoon figured out. A bunch of cars were arriving at the bar and all of the men in it had a bat. And this man was talking to someone inside the car and said that they were ready. A big man got out of the car and was a very gangster looking man. The man said that it was really unbelievable, and said that they lived so quietly, and asked what was gotten into them. His men asked if they should write in, and he said that maybe they just forgot to turn off the lights before leaving and suddenly told his men to send two people in to check if they were open for business. Two people got inside and they saw Shiho sitting on the couch and it was a new face to them. Shiho was being asked if they were open for business, and Shiho answered that they were, though they only served drinks and snacks. And so the two people reported to the boss that the guy inside said that they were open, but he was someone they had never seen before. And the boss said that if it was new, that makes sense, then the guy probably didn't know. His men asked what they should do and the boss said that they needed to teach him a lesson. And so all of them were heading inside and Shiho turned off the light, and said in his mind that he didn't know when or why that kind of relationship had been established. And a relationship where you get reported, cower in fear, and run your business while walking on eggshells. And once that type of relationship was established, it was not easy to reverse it. Moreover, it gets to the point where you can't even imagine reversing the relationship. And on that day, he was breaking that relationship. And the boss was asking if the guy was getting ready to take them on, and he wasn't planning on killing anyone, but now he kind of feels like it. And suddenly told Shiho that he was like a rat in a trap, and Shiho answered that he was not, and all of them were a bunch of rats who walked into his trap. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time.